lyrically, that track was actually really depressing. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Molly and in this video I'm going to be reacting to the album Pinkerton by Weezer. So a little while back on my channel I did an album reaction to Weezer's debut studio album, their Blue album, and it was really fun. I enjoyed the lyricism of it and you guys have been telling me time and time again in the comments that I have to give Pinkerton a listen to. Apparently they go in a really different direction with their sound on this second album. So yeah I figured I would sit down, kind of film a little reaction video to it, and see what I think of Pinkerton by Weezer. All right, so the first track on Pinkerton is the song Tired of Sex. Okay, this definitely has a slightly heavier sound to it, comparing it to the Blue album. Really sad lyrics, actually. All right, then we got some nice guitar going on here. Yeah, definitely a heavier sound comparing it to the Blue Album. Less of that kind of beachy laid back vibe. Track one, Tired of Sex. That one, I really got into the sound of it. Like I said, it definitely went a little bit heavier than the overall sound on their debut album. Their debut album had just that really kind of carefree, beachy, like Beach Boys vibe to it. And at least based on the first track on Pinkerton, they're definitely taking it in a heavier direction. And lyrically, that track was actually really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of got into some themes it sounded like of losing himself in other people and losing any sense of his identity and kind of giving that away to other people. Yeah, interesting lyrics for sure. Kind of a dark song and again with that more intense vibe. And moving on we have track two called Get You, I think is how you say it. <laughs> Yeah, again with the more intensity on this one. This one's super catchy, but again with kind of darker lyrics. This actually has reminded me of the White Stripes a tiny little bit with the intensity. I like it. I really like the instrumentals on this album so far. Track two, Get You. That one was great. I really enjoyed that one. Again, though, lyrically, very dark. Kind of going into hurting somebody and wanting them to hurt almost. I'm just really loving the intensity, though, on this album. They're just bringing it a little bit harder with the instrumentals, comparing it to the Blue album. And like I said, it's kind of giving me like some sort of white stripes rock sound to it, which I'm kind of digging. I'm really getting into it. And I'm going to move on to track three called No Other One. That's really sad. You don't want to be alone, so you're willing to stay with a liar. There's a great rhythm to this song that I really like. She's got a tattoo of a two-headed snake, I think is what it said. Yeah, this track especially, I'm picking up on kind of that more beachy sound, but again, they're still bringing that intensity to it. 
Track three, No Other One. I really enjoyed the sound of that one, kind of a little more on the melodic side, but they still were bringing that intensity in the instrumentals, especially toward the end. Lyrically, kind of getting into like a really messed up relationship dynamic about two people that lie to each other, probably shouldn't be with each other, but they're choosing to stay together because they don't want to be alone and they don't think anyone else is going to love them or accept them. Yeah, definitely some interesting themes for sure going on with Pinkerton, with the lyrics. All right, up next we have track four called Why Bother? Not something real, so I'd rather keep whacking. This album is really fun. Not lyrically, but instrumentally. I just really like the sound of it. Again, really sad lyrics, actually. This album's definitely getting into some pretty heavy, like, relationship themes. Track four, Why Bother? Lyrically, just another really sad song going into not really wanting to commit to anyone and just keep things really casual, keep things totally on a physical level, just for fear of basically getting your heart broken, but instrumentally, oddly really fun and catchy, so they're kind of playing up that dynamic a lot, and again, I just love the slightly more intense sound that they're bringing to Pinkerton. But I'm going to move on to the next track, track five, which is Across the Sea. Yeah, interesting start to this one, way more melodic. Trying to really pay attention to the lyrics of this one. Very interesting stuff going on. I've got your letter, you've got my song. I really do love all of the guitar that they're injecting on this album. It's just so catchy. Tried to be a monk. I like that piano in the background. Track five, Across the Sea. That one was a little bit more melodic, especially at the very beginning and then toward the end there with that quieter bridge. Definitely kind of a softer side to that one. I really liked the infusion of the piano too at times paired with the intense guitar that they brought too. There's a more polished, put together sound to Pinkerton, but the Blue Album is almost so good because it sounds less polished, if that makes sense. So they're both good qualities to both albums. All right, so moving on, track six, we have The Good Life. I liked the start to this one. <laughs> Again, this track is just so catchy. There's such a funky rhythm to it. I love it. I like all of the vocal stuff they're doing on this track. It's really fun. I really like this one. It's just really, really entertaining to listen to. Okay, now they're slowing it down. Now this part right here reminds me more of the Blue Album. It's kind of got that beachy quality to it.
Track six, The Good Life. I think that is a standout for me so far. That one just infused that heavier quality that Pinkerton has had, but it kind of made it a little bit more playful almost. Like there was just some really fun, entertaining elements to that one with the rhythm that they were introducing with the instrumentals and then the little things they were doing with the vocals at times. Even how the track started was kind of amusing. I just really was entertained by that song and it definitely reminded me of the Blue Album a little bit with kind of some of the sounds that they were infusing on that one. And up next we have tracks seven called El Scorcho. What was that at the start? This one's weird. This is a really odd one, lyrically. This is such an interesting album. These tracks are so fun, but really sad too, lyrically. But that's just a stupid dream that I won't realize. I'll bring home the turkey if you bring home the baby. This track is kind of the opposite of track three, No Other One. He thinks that they'd be good for each other. Track three, he knows they're bad for each other, but they're choosing to stay together anyway. Kind of interesting. Track seven, El Scorcho. I think that one's another favorite. I really liked just the general sound of that one. It was a little bit more laid back in its sound. It still definitely brought that intensity, which I'm loving on Pinkerton, but it's, it just had kind of a more like amusing, carefree sound to it. And moving on, we have track eight called Pink Triangle. I like how it's called Pink Triangle, and it started out with that chime, like the triangle-shaped instrument. I really like how on this album, they're definitely playing around with the whole, like they'll make it really quiet and then the instrumentals will just quickly build up the sound. It just brings a more intense edge to this album. Yeah, this one's interesting, lyrically, kind of about loving someone in your head, but in reality, they can't love you back. Track eight, Pink Triangle. Again, there's kind of a pop punk vibe to it. It's got a little bit more of that intensity, but there's still kind of just this rhythmic quality that is still very reminiscent to their debut album. I actually thought going into this reaction, Pinkerton was gonna sound extremely different, like a different band almost. And it's not, it's definitely got a different vibe to it, but there's a lot of similarities there. All right, up next we have track nine called Falling For You. They like doing that on Pinkerton, starting these tracks off really subtly and then just bringing the instrumentals. I just really like the dynamics on this album. I think they're playing around with that a little bit more than they did on the Blue album, which I like. Here's that guitar again. I liked his voice at that part. I haven't heard him sing that high really on many other tracks.
Track 9, Falling For You. That one had a very interesting ending to it with all of that screeching, like distorted guitar sound going on. And I just really liked that one from an instrumental standpoint. It just had that intense edge to it. Even the vocal delivery on that one. There were times where the vocals were being delivered with a little more aggression too, which I think make the lead singer's voice stand out almost a little bit more on Pinkerton. There's just like a power to it that I'm really liking. And I'm going to move right on to to track 10, the last track on Pinkerton called Butterfly. Caught a lovely butterfly I'm sorry for what I did Huh, yet again, another very sad track lyrically. A ghost slips away this one's starting out very melodic. I wonder if they're gonna bring more intensity to it or if they're gonna keep it like this the whole track. I guess you're as real as me. Life of chasing butterfly. What I think I want it slips away. This is a really enthralling track to listen to, despite how minimalistic it is. I ain't never coming back. I'm sorry. Huh, track 10, Butterfly. In my opinion, that was a perfect closing track for that album. I think it completely brought all of the lyrical themes going on and toxic relationship stuff that the rest of the album dealt with, and it kind of just wrapped it up in a really sad but beautiful ending where he's just apologizing. With how intense the rest of the album was, I think it was kind of a needed closer on this album, to be honest. All right, so that is going to conclude my reaction to Pinkerton, the second studio album from the rock band Weezer. Lyrically, there's a lot to get into here, and I definitely am going to go back and re-listen to a lot of these tracks, re-listen to the whole album, and get into it a little bit deeper. But upon my first listen to it, I really liked the slightly more intense sound that Weezer brought to this album compared to the Blue album. Some of the standout tracks on Pinkerton for me personally, I think one of them is track two, Get You. I really liked the more intense sound that that one brought. Uh, also track six, The Good Life, was kind of a standout, a little bit more reminiscent of the Blue album. I also really liked the closing track, Butterfly, just super simplistic and melodic, but really beautiful, and I think it just was a fantastic closer to the album. But yeah, Pinkerton by Weezer, I really, really enjoyed this album. It's got some great tracks on it, and I can see why so many people love it. I think it's just fantastically put together from beginning to end. It works great. Definitely let me know down in the comments if there's any other Weezer content you all want to see. And as usual, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.